So now we're going to enter the Truant environment and build some additional tools which form part of the temporary system. And when that's done, then we'll move on to actually building the Linux from scratch system. So um, first thing we've got to do is to return to the root user. The Linux from scratch user is no longer needed. So I'm going to do control D here. I'm also going to do the echo LFS to ensure that that environment variable is still set, which it is. And I'm going to move on to this part here where we change the ownership of the directories. We change it to LFS originally back to root. So I'll do each of these commands one at a time. And now I can move on to the kernel file systems. Make some more directories which will contain these virtual file systems. Two special um, device nodes are created which are used for starting the system. And in this command here we'll mount the system dev directory into the Linux from scratch dev directory or subdirectory and likewise all of these will do a similar function linking system virtual file system into the file systems which will only be visible during the fruit and we also need to run this command here which looks like I didn't do anything in this case. Entering the true environment. Now I'm going to make a slight change to what I normally do. I don't normally recommend um, optimizing the compile. Um, but I'm going to do that in this case because this machine is kind of on the brink of being uh, a little bit on the sluggish side um, where optimization could help it improve uh, just a little bit. So normally I'll just copy and paste this command in as it is, but I'm going to adjust it slightly as I'll show you um, to include some optimization. Another thing I would like to do is to also copy in the uh, change we made for the make flags, the make opts, um, sorry, make flags variable. Um, so to make that easy for myself and to ensure there's no mistakes typing in, I'm going to copy that from the LFS home directory. Um, is it in the bash RC? Yep. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll copy the bulk of this command up to here. Press enter at the end of that. I'm going to add in, leave out the export because that's a command. We're actually specifying parameters of, of this true command so we don't put that in. Oops. That's because we're not in a, I'm not on a UK or I've got a UK keyboard but the uh, system, maybe I should have set that up initially. System thinks I've got a US keyboard. Um, so make flags. The next thing I want to do is to add in a C flags parameter and or option. I'm going to add in minus O2, which will optimize the code. Add in a march to specify the architecture. I'm going to use native and I'm going to use the pipe option to use memory rather than temporary files. And they're quite conservative optimizations, but they're more than adequate. Um, any other optimizations may affect the test. And that's another thing. I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't testing. And as I'm going to be testing, I know that if I get any problems that are unexpected, that I can recompile disabling these flags. And if that compiles OK, then I know that the optimizations are a bit too extreme or not compatible with that package. Um, I'll copy this and add in CXX flags for the C++ compiler. Oh, 
done it again. And after that, I'll add in this last part of the command and press enter. And there we've got a prompt. So now in the true environment, so if I do ls minus l, um, this you can see has got today's date and this morning's time. This afternoon's time with the virtual file systems that I've just created and mounted. And also if I type in set, you can see we've got C flag set, which is what I've just specified. CXX flag is set and also make flags is oops, makes flag make flags is set as well. So that's the complete environment that I'm going to be using. As it says here, the warning about I have no name, that will be dealt with in a few moments. So now I've got to create some directories. And I'll do these one at a time, just to ensure there shouldn't be any problems. Um, if there were, it would likely happen with the first make do command, as it would be um, a permissions thing. So I just type these in, just check the output, there's no errors, that it's done what it said it's going to do, or we expect it to do. And you can see if I'd copied and pasted this in, it would have whizzed off the screen. And there'd have been a lot more information to digest at once. So it's far easier to do this one at a time. Having said that, you have to ensure that you do actually copy and paste each single command and don't miss any. I'll do these two one go because they're just sim links. You can see that they've both been created. And finally few more directories or permissions, special permissions on those directories and yep they've worked. So some essential files and sim links, so this first M tab here, basic hosts file, um, a password file, and the group file there's um, an account that's used specifically for testing so they create that in a special way here and then we can run this command to re-execute the bash command to reload these settings and you can see the I have no name has disappeared Let's just do the set command again to check that our variables are still intact, and they are. That's good, so it's C flags there, CXX flags, and make flags. Lastly, we've got these few additional directories to create, so I'll just put them in all in one go, because they are not don't output too much, but you can see that there's no errors there. And we can move on to the first of the last few uh, temporary tools that we need to build. So now remember we're in the truth so we don't there's no idea of the ls variable so if I do echo dollar lfs it's empty because we don't need that anymore we're actually in the what will be the root of the Linux, the new Linux from scratch file system. So all we need to do is go straight to the sources which is off the root and you can see there's all the files that were downloaded earlier on. So yeah, the first one is libstandard C++ with GCC, pass two. So once as before, once again, we need to extract the GCC tarball. And now normally I would set the um, optimization flags right at the beginning, and I only sort of thought about it halfway through what we're compiling earlier so I'm hoping it's not going to cause any problems the fact that the early tools haven't been compiled with that it shouldn't do 
Um, but there is a slight chance that that could cause a problem, but I, I don't expect it to. So CD into that directory, and now we can start building libgcc plus. So first of all, we've got a link to put in. We create our temporary directory again, and then configure. And you can see this is overriding the CSX flag, so there's a possibility that it might want to include the existing CXX flags um, as we've got some optimizations in there. So what I can do is copy that temporarily, put in dollar open curly bracket CXX flags, close, put a space in, and then put in the remainder of the command. Now in some cases, um, packages either ignore or they override the C flag settings, and that's either because they have to use specific settings or because um, use defined settings may cause a knowingly cause a build to break. So let's build this now. Now it could be that the compilation takes actually longer because of the optimizations that have to be computed, but conversely, the system should be faster ultimately because because of the optimizations. So while we're compiling, there might be a bit of a, a balance, six of one and a half a dozen the other, but ultimately the final system should be that little bit nippier because of the op optimizations. Okay, that's done. Let's install it. And that's all complete. So now let's tidy up. And move on to the next package, which is get text. So I've got a simple configure. Okay, and we'll build that with make.
Okay, that's finished building. So there's no action installed at this point. We'll just copy a few tools that have been generated and that's it. So tidy up, move on to the next package, which is Bison. And once again, we've got a configure command to start with. And we can build it now. And install it. And that's that bison done. So we'll tidy up and move on to the next package, which is Pearl. Okay, so this isn't auto completing, there's a patch file there, there's obviously no existing directory, so just press the dot, press tab to complete the tarball. So the configure option or command rather is quite big. That's done. So as it says there, run make to compile it and wait a few moments for this to build. So that's compiled, 
Let's now install it with make install. And that's it. Clear up. And move on to Python. Now Python package is one of several with an exception in that the Python the package begins with a capital letter. So if I was to do uh, PYT, I get the docs file because it begins in lowercase, but the actual source code for Python begins with a capital P. So that's an important thing to notice, as does the installate or the source directory. Also begins with a capital P. So configure this. And now we'll build the package. And as you'll notice here, it says some of the modules can't be built um, because dependencies aren't, dependencies aren't installed. Um, and it says about some failure messages because of this, but they can be ignored. So we can ignore that if we see it. And afterwards, when it's finished, we'll just do make install. Okay, so we can install it now. And that's complete. Uh, next patch, package we've got is text info. So first we've got a sed command and then we can begin by configuring and run make to build the package. and finally install it and it's done so the next package is util linux uh, 
first of all we've got to make a directory and then we've got this very big configure command And then we can run to make command to build the package. and lastly install it and that's done so that's the end of this part as you can see we've got some tidying up we can do and this is all about saving space so um, this can be skipped but you can do it anyway to save space so if we look to see how much space has been used so far, we've got 2.9 gigabytes used. So 2968. Uh, what's that? Two, yeah, 2.968 gigabytes. So we can first of all remove some documentation. Saves only 35 megabytes. It's not a great deal, but it's a little bit. Then there's these LA files, which can be deleted. Again, it's not going to save a great deal. Almost negligible. And then the um, tools directory can be removed, um, which, as it says, saves about a gigabyte. So as you can see, it's gone down from 2.9 to 1.9 gigabytes. Uh, remaining steps are optional. It's all about backing up the... Um, system as it is in case um, something goes wrong um, I've never really found this to be a problem um, but I guess if you are uh, doing this for the first time or maybe second or third time still quite new to it you might want to um, to do this um, and it's got to be done outside the true environment as it says there and basically it would be to back up everything that you can see on the route there um, just so that it can be restored um, so I'm not actually going to go through this but um, I guess yeah I guess I will do actually just show you um, how to do it it's a bit, bit of a convoluted thing to do so yeah, what we've got to do is to type an exit to come out. Um, the virtual file systems have to be unmounted. So we run these two commands because we don't want to include them as part of the backup. They're virtual. They change as the system changes. Um, and then change into this directory. And they give this command here. Um, which is fine if you're low on memory you can actually do it slightly differently to speed up if you've got lots of memory because um, this command will only run on one core um, but if you do the command in two stages uh, you can actually get it running slightly fast, faster so the way I would do it is to run the tar command first so tar minus C to create uh, P for permissions 
shouldn't be needed because we're a root user, but it doesn't harm to add that in. The F for the file name. So we'll put in... Now, if we use home, it's going to take up the memory because this is a live file system. So what I'm going to do is to copy this into um, the uh, MNT, forward slash MNT, forward slash LFS. So yes, it's on the system we're backing up, but um, I can't put it anywhere else because everywhere else is in memory and it will fill up the memory um, and run out. Uh, so it'd be a bit pointless, but um, if you're to do this, you'd normally be maybe booting from a working system, but certainly if you're doing this from a live CD, you'd have to do what I'm doing here and then uh, copy this file once it's archived off the machine because obviously if you reboot, you're going to lose it. So let's run this, just see how long this... Um, oh, uh, I've got to put the full stop in to say that I want to back up the current directory. So, oh right, there's no V there, so it's not showing exactly what it's backing up, but... Um, oh right, okay, yeah, it's trying to back up itself. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, it looks like it's done it because the tar file is 1.9 gig. That's how much space we were using. Um, yeah, it's now using double that. So it looks like that was just a warning saying that um, it's the archive, so it's not dumping it. It's not dumping itself into the archive because that would make no sense. So that's done. Now the next command we need to do is the XZ command to do the actual compression, which is what this J command would do in the tar file. Um, there's several switches here, Z to compress, V for verbose, E for extra compression. Um, if you do run out of memory, you could possibly leave that off. 9 for maximal compression, and then capital T for the number of threads. And generally, um, I think I'm right in saying that with this command, uh, with XZ, you want to give about 4 gigabytes per uh, per thread that you're using. So I've got 8 gigabytes, so the maximum I'm going to chance my luck with is 2 threads. Um, obviously, you've got more you can put up to the maximum. And then the name of the file we want to compress, which is this LFS temp tools. And we'll just wait for that to finish compressing. And I'll just monitor the memory. It will actually crash out if it runs out of memory. You can see it's running on two threads there, CPU 0 and 1 at the moment. And the memory used it's using 2 gig at the moment, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's slowly going up. You can see the line here says it's using 1.5 gig. Um, so the remainder is probably other, the other processes that are currently um, in operation. So it looks like it's going to take 11 minutes to finish that time. So to finish that um, job, that task. So we'll just um, wait for that to complete and come back. So it actually looks like it's not taking any more memory, so I might chance some luck and try three threads because it should cut down the time a bit. Um, I'm sure I've tried this with four threads the maximum and it's run out of memory, so I'm not going to bother trying that, but three might be worth chancing my luck with. So 
you can see the rate of that it's processing the data out has gone jumped up immediately by 50% so and the time already just after 15 seconds is nine minutes so that's going to be down to eight minutes or so by the time it gets to the same amount of time that it did previously so it's um, definitely worth worth doing trying to squeeze as much out of the system as possible Do you know what this looks like? I thought I'd done this with four threads and it had failed. It looks like it should work with four. So I really am going to push the boat out. I may be thinking of another system that I've used recently. So this is estimating about seven minutes now. Yeah, I think this is going to be all right. It's just started. It's still only about a quarter of the memory that's available, so I'll leave that to go as it is.
So that finished um, after nine minutes. It seemed to be getting slower towards the end. It was obviously doing different things to what it was doing to start off with. Um, it didn't seem to be as much difference going from two, going from three to four as it was going from two to three threads. But anyway, and also not as much memory as I thought. It seemed to be um, one gigabyte per thread. So something to bear in mind for the future. Anyway, you can see it's um, saved quite a bit of space. It's about, uh, what's that, 40% of the size that it was originally. Um, yeah, there it is there. It's now just under um, 800 megabytes. So, yeah, seven, just over 750 megabytes. Uh, so, like I say, you'd probably want to get that off the machine as quickly as possible if, if you're doing this uh, really for protection um, in, in the environment. Um, this tells you how to restore it, which I'm not going to do. And then we have to um, go back into preparing the uh, virtual file system. So we don't need to do the make there. We don't need to remake the device nodes. They should still be there. These are the commands that we'll need to run again. And these four here. Oops. And this is not necessary to run again. I'll show you, it didn't do anything before, it didn't do anything now. So that's that done. And we need to re-enter the same true command we had before. So I can recall one I did previously. If you do control R, type in truth, you'll see it search for the command, find the command that um, had all the parameters, additional parameters we typed in. And there we are back again. And we can do the set again just to check that those optimization flags are set and the make flags is set as well. And finally go back into sources. And we're now ready to build the Linux from scratch system itself.